Hi guys, if you saw my last video, I said I'd promise I'd show you how I bleach negatives and then use Lightroom or Photoshop to convert it into a digital file. And then stay with me and I'll show you how I did this in the darkroom. In today's video, we go from Lightroom to darkroom. Hey guys, Matt here from italike.com. I've been shooting with various film cameras for around the last 15 years and I've developed my film in a sink in a Patterson tank. I've never had my own darkroom or access to a darkroom because I've just never had space. Now the problem is, when you're single, it's great because nobody nags you, but it's also a problem because you can kind of go off the rails and do whatever you want, whenever you want. So what I've done is I've converted my only bathroom that I've got in my small two room flat into a dark room. So now I have to go to the gym to have a shower. <laughs> so five months ago, I bought an enlarger, expecting to set it up the next day. And it's taken me five months to find time to get around to doing this. I've never used a dark room before. I've never used an enlarger before. I have zero DIY skills. And so I wasn't even sure if I'd be able to do it. Okay, it's a bit dark at the moment. Truth, does it work? So I've got it set up on my box on top of the bath. And then I've connected everything up, I think. So let's press the button. <laughs> it works. Goodbye, shower. Hello, dark room. <laughs> wow, amazing. Okay, so the plan is to do some contact printing first with 4x5 photos. So I'll come back to you. I found this old photo frame, so I'm going to use the glass from it to sandwich my negative against the paper for my contact printing. That's the plan. <laughs> okay, so I took my photo frame, uh, took the frame off, cleaned the glass on both sides, put masking tape on one side and then double tape on the other side. Made a little tab so I can open it. And there's my little device to put the negative underneath to keep it flat. Let's try it. <laughs> okay, so luckily I'd bought all the kit I needed five months ago. So I had the, the red light, the paper, the easel, the grain checker thing. Um, so I was all ready to go. But for any of you experienced darkroom users, what is the first mistake I'm about to make that I wasn't even aware of until in about five minutes time? So I'm opening my homemade contact printer and then as I say, that keeps your negative flat and then we can make a print from it. Here you can see me taking my piece of photo paper, which you have to use in red light. Next, I need to lay over my negative. As I say, it's a 4x5 negative, so it's really big compared to, say, 35mm or, say, medium format. Then close the glass and that keeps it nice and flat so you can do enlargement print. And then if you've ever seen a dark room print video before, you need to do your test strips. So what I'm doing is, I think, three or five second intervals, moving a piece of cardboard. And that's going to give me, show me what's the correct exposure for the, the right time. So this is my first print and it's completely exposed. <laughs> so if you notice what I did wrong was I left the light on when I put the paper underneath the enlarger. And so it exposed the paper before it even started. <laughs> okay, try again with a second sheet of paper, this time success. So you can see the different grades of lightness to darkness from the different times used. And I pick the amount of time I want for the exposure that I want. So in this case, I think it was 15 seconds. Once I knew my time, I could then start doing contact prints and seeing how my negatives were going to look. So I could decide which ones or where you want to print. It's a little bit like you may have seen in like the, the Magnum book, if you've seen that book. I can't tell you how rewarding it is to print your own contact sheets like this. I've always only ever scanned my negatives. And so this is literally the first time I've ever printed my own contact sheets. And I can't believe it's taken me like probably the best part of 15 years to finally make my first contact sheets. If you've never played in the dark room, I cannot recommend it highly enough. As you see in a minute, it's going to get really creative really quick. So next thing today was to create a few more contact sheets to try to decide which of the photos from my recent Poland trip I might want to do enlargement for. So I quite like the one in the bottom right. So the plan was to then do an enlargement and make a bigger print from that negative. So it took me a few attempts to try to get the exposure right because they're all slightly different exposures. And then as you see here, I went from this to this. <laughs> so this is an enlargement of that contact sheet print. And yeah, pretty happy, you've got to say. <laughs> now it is a really, really complicated print to make the way I did it. I was kind of making it up as I went along, but I was doing split grade printing so i was doing yellow light first to put a base layer down base exposure and i was doing red light after to give more contrast 
and then I was using various tools that I was making up as I was going along to try to get the look that I wanted in my head. Um, to make it even more complicated, I was only knew that I had the uh, 35mm um, condenser light, which meant I was getting a small light through the, a big negative, so only the centre of the negative was enlarged, was illuminated, which meant the final prints were coming out as kind of rectangular rather than the original square print. That was fine for my creativity, and he can see me spinning between the, the yellow light and the red light. I was making all sorts of devices trying to work out how to hold various masks and things that I was making up as I went along. I was always a very crafty kid, and I don't mean sneaky, I mean crafty as in I was always making things out of cardboard. I always thought I'd make my millions from making my own board game like Risk or Monopoly or something like that. So I'm very much in my element when it comes to playing with cardboard and making stuff. If you you have the similar kind of mindset, you would absolutely love dark rooms because you can just get so creative. And I think it stops being photography and it starts being art. And I know this is probably a very controversial topic, but I think for the first time I'm starting to make maybe art. I mean, please comment below, tell me what you think. I was using multi-grade paper and in two days I printed over 60 five by seven prints in an attempt to teach myself dark room printing. Some of them I absolutely love, like the one I just put down. These ones I really like. Um, potentially, I guess I could maybe sell prints as well to help fund my dark room activities. And at least that'll pay for the paper and things. So if you're interested in prints, let me know. and Maybe I can speak to the models and maybe do some one-off signed prints if that's something people are interested in. If this is what I can do in two days, I'm very excited for the future. <laughs> Now, as promised, in the last video, I showed you some 4x5 photo shoot images, and one of them was a Fuji FP100C print and the negative. Now, most people normally throw the negatives away, which is the black bit. But what I said was, if you bleach it, you can actually make a real negative out of it and then scan it. I scanned the negative with my Epson V800 flatbed scanner. I tried to make the negative flat before scanning, and then imported it into Lightroom, flipped into colour, and also tried a black and white one. They're a bit rough looking, but this is how good they can look. So these are some of my old images shot kind of, I think, eight years or so ago. And you can get quite smooth looking negatives if you do it more carefully. In summary, if you feel like you've hit a plateau with your photography, definitely try dark room printing. For me, I feel like I've now only just started and it's the biggest leap forward in my photography journey so far. Thanks for watching and as always, thanks to my amazing patrons.